Before Jordan Peele shot Us, he told Rolling Stone that he was kind of disappointed with the genre confusion over Get Out. He said that initially he set out to make a horror movie and it kind of broke his heart a little bit when people called it a social thriller, but after a while he came around and started calling it a social thriller himself. With Us, he set out to make a full on horror movie and now that I've seen it, I can tell you that's exactly what it is and it's an incredible one at that. Us was shot in both Santa Cruz and Los Angeles, which is a different setting for a straight up horror movie than I've gotten used to over the past few years. Years. but it works well especially with the context that we get during the intro scene featuring young Adelaide. Lupita Nyong'o carries her role perfectly which really doesn't surprise me since she's proven time and time again she has incredible range. She's not exactly happy to be back at their beach house in Santa Cruz but she manages to stay strong willed and determined to protect her family. My favorite character in this movie though is 100% Winston Duke's Gabe Wilson. He's just played so perfectly. He's this big goofy guy who might get a little caught up in his rivalry with their friends the Tylers but at the end end of the day, he's pretty much the best dad on planet Earth and he just loves his kids and wants to protect them. It's just such a different role too for Winston Dukes, especially compared to M'Baku from Black Panther. He provides most of the comic relief in this movie, which is kind of a bold choice, again because of the character he's played before, but he kills it. After every tense encounter with a tethered, he comes in with a perfectly timed joke, and I'm just so glad he was in this movie and that he didn't die. Michael Galakis has been one of my favorite cinematographers for a while, pretty much ever since I saw It Follows. He did an incredible job on that, and he did just as good of a job on both Split and Glass. But this, and Us, might be his best work yet. It just feels like he's absolutely in sync with everything Jordan Peele wants to bring from page to screen here, and he's just kind of like invaluable to this movie. One shot that's still etched into my mind is an extreme close-up of red that fills almost exactly half the screen while Adelaide stands behind her. It's during one of the longer exposition sequences in the movie that would have got boring without this awesome shot work. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of creativity on display here, since everyone in the movie is essentially playing two roles. I personally can't wrap my head around how hard this movie must have been to shoot, but the best part about it is that Jordan Peele and Galakis together make it feel effortless. Tim Heidecker and Elizabeth Moss play Josh and Kitty Tyler respectively, and they both absolutely kill it in these characters, which is crazy considering they're both kind of playing characters outside of their comfort zone. What I mean by that is Tim Heidecker has to play a normal person, and Elizabeth Moss has to play a dumbass suburban mom who wants to speak to your manager. Even though Tim Heidecker does a great job as Josh, I was kind of still stuck figuring out why exactly he was cast in this movie until he's killed off by his tethered and he basically gets to play a character from the Tim and Eric show. And then it kind of all just made sense. Evan Alex and Shahadi Wright Joseph don't have nearly as much screen time or dialogue as their parents in this movie, but when they do take the spotlight, they each have their own defining moments that they handle perfectly, like way better than the average child actor. And if you've been here for a while, you know how critical I am of child actors and I was really impressed with their performances here. Between the two kids, Jason was definitely my favorite though. I love that he wore a Jaws shirt and was rarely shown without his creepy mask, at least on top of his head. And when he was holding the rabbit at the end, it all clicked for me that he's basically a young Jordan Peele. The thing that really solidified Jordan Peele as a master of horror for me though, is how great the kills are in Us. I was expecting a gore fest going into this movie because it's rated R, but a lot of the violence in it is implied. The characters use awesome weapons like fire pokers and putters, there's some great throat slitting and there's a ton of blood, but most of the violence is off screen and it really does make you imagine what's going on in a cool way. It's a choice that I really appreciated. Now I'm not saying it wouldn't have been awesome to see a practical effect of Abraham getting chopped up by a boat propeller underwater. I'm definitely not saying that at all. But Abraham is big and dumb and those are the two things that Gabe is obviously insecure about with himself. So by using his brain to outsmart Abraham by smashing the engine so it turns on and sucks him underwater, it's not only a well-directed kill, but it leaves it up to your imagination. So I went home and I had a nightmare about it that I definitely wouldn't have had if it looked like Piranha 3D. This might go both ways for some people, but I thought it was really cool that throughout the entire movie, Jordan Peele wore every single influence he had on his sleeve. I immediately recognized that the idea of the tethered being imperfect clones of American citizens feeding on rabbits raw underground until they emerge and kill people living above them is similar to the movie Chud. But instead of making us guess that it was an inspiration for him, he thought to put a VH just tape of the movie right next to the Goonies on a shelf as the Hands Across America commercial plays during the intro. And speaking of Hands Across America, now is the perfect time to tell you guys how I think Us is connected to Get Out. So we know that the Tethered are essentially clones of the people on the surface world, but whoever created them ran into an issue where the clones were unable to be perfected since their souls were fragmented chunks broken off the person they were cloned from. And throughout Us, we see the Bible verse Jeremiah 11:11 pop up multiple times. Now I'm not religious, so I had to look this one up. 
It reads, I will bring on them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. After reading that, I think it's pretty clear that God exists in this universe, and that sort of explains why there are so many problems with the tether. I think what Jordan Peele is implying here is that our bodies and our souls are linked. So if we copy a human body, it has to be inhabited by the same soul as the one it was copied from. That's why the tethered act out the same basic motions as their surface dwelling counterparts. I also think that when one of these bodies are killed, the souls recombine and the killer gets the dead version's memories, which is why Adelaide makes that creepy throat noise of her tether as Red dies in her arms. The one thing I'm still not sure about here is if Adelaide knew she was a tethered the entire time or if when she killed Red she got that memory back. She could have forced herself to forget when she was a kid or when she left the facility she might have switched memories with the version she left down there. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as for how us and Get Out connect, whoever made the tethered figured out how to clone people before 1986 because that's when Hands Across America took place. And while we don't know the exact medical procedure and get out, I'm thinking that the reason the tethered were abandoned is because the people who made them figured out how to transfer the soul between bodies so they didn't need the clones anymore, and they figured the tethered would just die off. There's also definitely a political angle about how Americans take what they have for granted, and have an out of sight, out of mind mentality about the ever present homelessness and poverty in their lives both globally and locally. But it's not shoved directly in your face, and it's delivered with a sense of nuance that I really appreciated. At the end of the day, while we don't know how intertwined Jordan Peele's movies actually are, the universe he's created is absolutely incredible. Personally, I'd argue that it's more important for us to be a success than get out because the sophomore slump is real and now no one can deny that Jordan Peele is a master of horror. So that's what I thought of us. Let me know what you thought of the movie and my video and specifically my ending theory down in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.